Welcome to another bot bash where we take as many bots as possible, put them in as small a place as possible, and we let them juke it out to the death. Today we are playing on Watery Grave. This is Battle Realms, by the way. Forgot that part. This is Battle Realms. The map is Watery Grave. Um, we've got four random AI. Kill the keep settings. Maximum army. Maximum resources. Starting with uh, regular population. A bunch of different settings and a new bot um, testing out different bot settings to try and get the most aggressive bots out of it try and get the most exciting games out of it we've got uh, this bot is called aggro and aggro bot has high aggressiveness high uh, harassment um, moderate healers apparently very intelligent and very clever but we'll see what all that means um, as this game goes on uh, hopefully it'll create an exciting battleground for them to fight on. This is a very interesting map because of all the, the watery areas in the center, um, the narrow pa passageways that you could theoretically block off with just a few units because of the very sticky combat making it hard to get through. But there is all these little avenues and paths around that make it a very, uh, very exciting map. And there's also lots and lots of rice. Everyone's going to have so many resources, they should build up nice big armies and slap each other silly. Not to mention, everyone has keeps. It is kill the keep, first person to lose. Oh, if you lose your keep, you die. That's it. I like how you can see the uh, pattern where they've just sort of stuck these same patterns over and over. I don't know if I've really noticed that before, but uh, yeah, it's really kind of obvious on this map. So, what we have here is, in the orange, we've got the Lotus Clan. In the purple, we have a dragon clan. Over in the green, a lotus clan. And down here, we have the red dragon. So, we have red dragon, orange lotus, purple dragon, and green lotus. Very interesting. Uh... <laughs> I just realized they swapped colors to what they should normally be. Should have... They've, they've swapped yin and yang. So, we've got team yin, who is... Uh... <laughs> They're not even teams. Let's just see how this game goes. We've already got armies building up nice and big. They start with a decent sized army. I think it's a uh, four units, four peasants. Um, and that gives them a springboard to build an immediate army. They also start with lots of resources, which is important to get them uh, building all their structures very quickly because otherwise they, they tend to take a while to get going. Maybe taking a while to get going is important for them to have that early weak phase where they can get taken down but I, I don't think you know maybe maybe not we'll see uh i think what's most important is having so much rice around it means that they'll never stop harvesting rice which means they should go all the way up the tech tree and start building heroes they have a favoritism of 80 um 80 hero usage i don't know what that actually means i think it means that they should pretty much always be trying to use zen masters but uh you never know with the ai <laughs> They might not use it because of Kill the Keep. Oh, splat. Really should save the Rite of Ascension until the unit's low. Uh, but if you just want a Warlock, I don't actually think it's that bad, to be honest. Warlocks are a pretty good unit. What you really need is a channeler to heal them up. Got a Watchtower coming up over near that Keep. Not a bad idea to protect it. Um, but really, this is bot mode. Bots aren't going to be rushing down your Keep. Kill the Keep is actually a horrible mode to play against players because if they're playing something like the Wolf Clan, it is so easy to destroy a Keep like that you just get like six sledges and run a force in the front and then you run six sledges in the back and that keep is gone before the enemy can stop you it's really not a fun game type to play with other humans unless you have like a rule of like you can't target the keep if the enemy has an army or you can only burn it down or something like that where you have to limit it so the players can't just rush in and here is our first fight of the game i think this favors dragon clan uh, the red dragon fighting the green lotus just because they've got those range units but then again those aren't very strong range units and i will see that they get quickly cleaned up i think it's the fault of the dragon uh, warriors they don't have uh, very good slashing defense and there are lots of slashing units in there the three blade acolytes which means these blade acolytes are going to come along and fight the orange lotus and the orange lotus are going to destroy them pretty easily i think they've got that warlock they just have the generally more varied team comp and they have that scary scary lotus tower which you should never fight under if you can avoid it uh, you know, it's best to send like one unit forward to get zapped by it and try and tank as much of that damage instead of 
uh, spreading it out, because the tower does do a bit of splash, which is scary, scary. And so we'll see that the green lotus just got destroyed there. See the purple dragon now moving out. Everyone wants to pick a fight with the orange lotus. He's apparently the big enemy today. Um, no crossing here for them to fight normally. I think there might be a crossing. It's hard to say. Oh no, okay. Dragon's going to fight dragon. Lotus is going to fight lotus. Oh, I heard a brother. Yeah, we got one of the brothers out. Nice. How are they going up here? Are they getting brothers? They've got their uh, town center already. That's good, good, good. Uh, how we go on tech over here, town center, cool. Hopefully we'll see some Zen Masters soon. I don't know how long it takes uh, the AI to do them. I don't know if Kill the Keep breaks it and the AI doesn't like to build them, but we'll we'll see. And here we've got the Orange Lotus actually fighting the Purple Dragon outside of the Red Dragon base. If only they had attacked and then the Lotus come in, then it would have been actually a much more effective fight. You would have seen the Red Dragon taking a real beating and sort of weakened for a while. And there you go, you see that Rite of Ascension pulling back the unit from the brink of death so that they can keep fighting as a warlock, maximizing the use of combat, and also pulled them out of the melee fight, which was invaluable because the warlocks are much more effective in range than they are melee. Their melee damage is very negligible, and I think we'll see this infested one. Yep, he's going to go down, but he did take the dragon with him. And now it's a close fight. I think the warlock loses. Or maybe not. The warlock, the warlocks have a very, very fast fire rate. If you just have a whole bunch of warlocks, they tear through anything so quickly. And the chemists, they just don't do a lot of damage in a general sense. And here we do actually have another force from the purple dragon coming in to assist. But now the red dragon has arrived to repel these invaders from their lands, and we'll see that they should get cleaned up. Or if they bring everything over. Uh, but otherwise, it's sort of wait. Sorry, I'm getting confused because the archers look very red there. <laughs> the purple dragon archers are very red looking in terms of the bows and the quivers. I would have thought they would be coloured in the team colours as well, but unfortunately, it's just going to be very confusing in this game. In the meantime, we see more units moving out from the green lotus. See where they're going to go. We've got the upgraded town centre to the crucible. How are they doing for tech? They're not actually teching up that much. They got the brothers, but that was sort of it. They've got enough resources to do it, so I don't know why they're not building their own town center. Uh, up here, again, sort of staying on the tech they're at. It's strange, because the AI does have all the resources they could ever need, but it's like they get stuck on certain tech things. They, they struggle to progress past a certain point. And here we're going to see another big engagement between Green Lotus and Red Dragon. Uh, I think this favors the Lotus because of those Warlocks in the back that just do so much damage. But they have both gotten pulled into melee range. Uh, it's still going to favor the Lotus. The Dragon really didn't have a strong showing there. And now this should get absolutely cleaned up by these Warlocks. You can just see that fire rate is absurd. It's, it's faster than most other units, I'd say. Like, there's, there'd be a few that out-shoot it, but for the amount of damage Warlocks do, their attack speed is insane. And I think it's because they're the only tier 3, like, actual range unit. I know there's Samurais, but Samurais don't... Ooh, so pretty. I like it. Does this mean we're going to see a... Is it a Shrine Maiden? I'm going to wait to see it pop out. Oh, oh I was teching up to a Royal Academy. Okay. <laughs> I haven't seen that effect for a while. I don't normally use that tech, obviously. Uh, Green Lotus is going to suicide all their forces into this tower. Orange Lotus is going to repel the attack quite easily. But at least the teams are being much more aggressive this time, uh, much less passive. Um, even if they don't achieve much, at least it makes for a more interesting game. And you know what? At the end, we will base performance off... You know, we'll say this runs for about 20 minutes, maybe half an hour. We'll base performance off... Um, basically like kills and peasants and everything like that you know like how involved they were and how interesting they made the fight because you know what we're here to see bots bash each other and if the bots aren't bashing each other what's the point in watching so we'll base it off uh kills and and things like that um whoever does the most killing units trained violence good stuff that's what we'll do and also zen masters more zen masters we need more I like it. We've got a monk coming out now. Yin Yang acquisition is on the highest amount it is. We've got an enforcer. Guardian, sorry. Enforcers, I think, a serpent must be. 
I can't remember all the units, I'm sorry. This is a nice force. I like the horses. Uh, did I see... I wish there was one channeler in there. Channelers, again, sometimes it feels like Lotus got all the all the best stuff. Because channelers feel like one of the best healers in the game. Because they've got the three uses. It doesn't have like a cooldown. It doesn't have a stamina use. Um, and until you get the upgrade to lower your healing cost... Um, you know, Geishas can only heal twice, and then you get the upgrade, they can do four times until they need more stamina. Um, so the channel it just starts off feeling better, and I, I feel like they can some they're just somehow faster. And there we see our first Zen Master in Kazan. I love it. And what is going on with that monk? He didn't get textured today. <laughs> Stop selecting the building. Uh, okay, well we've got the purest monk to ever walk the battlefield. And I love seeing Kazan out. He's probably... I wouldn't even consider him good. Like, look how slow he attacks. But he does breathe fire, which is cool. And he's got that fire breath at range. Pow. This is actually a fairly even fight right now. If this monk goes down and, and the enforcer, uh, the guardian... Oh, it's going to be close. No, I think the, uh, the warlocks are going to get cleaned up before they can get back into range which is the only way they would have been saved. And yeah, you'll see this one goes down and then the Guardian will turn around and bring him into melee. We've got more Guardians coming. A nice little conga line of them. Uh, is there any fighting going on anywhere else? We see Rain. That's Zymoth. Zymoth is on the battlefield. Where is he? Not orange? Does green have him? Don't do this to me, game. Where is Zymoth? Oh, there he is. Zymoth! The main man. The legend. Honestly, I think out of all the heroes, all the Zen Masters in the game, Zymoth is the coolest. No one else is as cool as Zymoth. You can't, like, you can try and pick someone else, but no one else causes it to rain and then brings down lightning on his enemies. When you use Zymoth's ability, it simultaneously buffs all your allies because they no longer need to water their rice, but it makes them afraid because they know in the middle of a fight Zymoth is going to bring the thunder and that is just so good he's so cool <laughs> what have we got there just a powder cake cannon here I'm watching now for the for the uh, Zen Masters coming out I'm excited Red is being really passive and I don't approve of that I feel like he needs to be getting into the game a lot more this is I love the white monk hearing those those guardians shout There is five Guardians now. Why do you have so many Guardians? Six of them! Okay. The AI seems to focus in on one unit sometimes and just build a whole bunch of them without really thinking it through. You need to represent. Lotus represent. You need to. you got to get on the same level as uh, Orange right now. Orange is, is really showing you up. If there is a river crossing here, I will lose my mind. This is such a big army. His population is almost capped out. Orange needs to get into the fight um, before he wastes any more time, basically. He's got only one uh, yin. Oh, he's got no rice. That's part of the problem. But no, he needs to get in the fight with that big army he's got. Uh, see just one warlock getting absolutely mobbed to death. Send in your entire force. You could kill someone with this. This is a huge army. And you've got Zymoth. Fighting Polygon team. <laughs> it's just the one monk with no texture. This isn't going to do it. If he's trying to lure them, it's it's a really bad plan. He's going to kill that peasant, though. Okay. Yeah, I'm feeling uh, this is going to take marks off orange for, for passive play. Very passive play. Same with Red Dragon. Red Dragon... I must have missed a fight of theirs, because they should have a way bigger army than what they already have. Like, this is really just kind of pathetic. Is that Tau? Oh yeah, Tau. I have a favoritism to certain Zen Masters, <laughs> in case you can't tell. Isil is my favorite. He's just so cool. I think I've talked about it before, but he is so cool. Isil's the best. Here we're going to see another slaughtering of dragon warriors, but hopefully they'll take out the tower. I'm not seeing the towers there. Oh, bring down the lightning! 
The Zymeth striking them with lightning instead of attacking. It's so cool. That tower is actually going to go down, which is a big thing for this drag for the dragon in this fight. And actually, the Lotus is split among two fronts, and I'm going to watch this one first because. Okay, never mind. I'm going to go swatch the other one real quick. Okay, never mind. Going back to the first. Um, Zymeth is going to clean this up. Oh my god, he's so cool. But they did a good showing taking out a tower. Like, that was impressive. But uh, this Lotus Force just had too many soldiers. He really needs to just take them all, send them all at the same time. Like, this is a, a nice attack force. Is there anything left at home? Just a couple of units. They really should just take everything and send everything. I'm, I don't know why they don't. I've tried setting it to maximum settings, I swear. And the AI just doesn't know how to aggro. Which is funny, because I named them aggro for that exact purpose. Get in there. This is... <laughs> This is a parody. <laughs> this, this is Kazan. Kazan went drinking. And he was like, hey, we're going to go fight the Lotus Clan. Uh, who wants to come? And a bunch of guys picked up sticks. And then there was a bunch of his drinking buddies from Sumo Night. And they were all like, yeah, let's go. And, uh, and one monk was like, oh, I'll make sure these guys keep out of trouble. Make sure they're not in too much trouble. Yeah, the white monk, the blessed monk. Um, and a single geisha. And they're all like, yeah, let's go. Let's go <laughs> fight the... Oh, my God, it's Isil. Yeah. <laughs> and this is a perfect time to attack too, because Green Lotus's forces are actually over here in a much bigger and much more impressive fight. Look at everything going off here. Oh, it seems like all the monk textures are broken. We're seeing arrows fly, or the, the leaves fly. A lot of... This, I think, favors Green until that stun effect went down. Wow, what was that? Was that a tower? What tower was that? That was ages away. Oh, it might have been the um, Guardians. Do they have a... I can't remember what their ability is. Um, over here we see the Guardians going down. Powder Cakes are going to make mincemeat of this base. Kazan should... Well, he sets things on fire really well, so... He's doing his part. Um, as long as these Guardians just keep in the mix of it all, um, this really does favor the purple lotus over there. This is interesting. If this uh, lotus force comes down here now and attacks the red dragon while it's weak, it could do a lot of damage and really make a difference. I'm just seeing if the green lotus cleans up the red dragon. It looks like they might. Um, it's very close. These units seem to be very resistant to magic damage and giving them the hardest time. Uh, over here, again, they're destroying this base. Three powder kegs just left on their own devices and tear apart buildings like you wouldn't believe. And while they don't have a lot of frontline, they have enough. Okay, I think this is the ability that the Guardians have, where they can stay alive for a lot longer. Um, this might be crippling the green, like, irreversibly, if not, like, deadly. Uh, if there was just a few more units here, like, that would be it. They're not going to recover from it. They just need a couple of samurai in there to hit the peasants and stand on the peasant line, and, and that's it for green. Green is dead. But even just destroying all the buildings will, will cripple him enough that he basically will never recover. And here we see the green actually did really good against Red Dragon. And if Orange Lotus just took all this army, this is so much army, Orange is, is being way too passive this game. If they just took all that army and sent it in, they'd probably clean up. What they really need to do here is take out this tower. I mean, it's nice that they're destroying all these buildings, but they need to take out that tower. What's interesting, though, is... The Lotus are running out of unit buildings. They're running out of unit buildings to train. Uh, unfortunately, this Leaf Disciple might just clean. <laughs> yeah, here we go, okay. So they've got enough now to, to sort of fend this off. These aren't good fighting units, really. Um, you know, a couple of things, maybe they'll lose the stables. But other than that, that'll basically be it, you know? It won't be anything more than that. Um, because a, a single blade acolyte should really just clean up the powder kegs. And we've got some leaf disciples now. The tower was going the entire time. If they just taken all three powder kegs and focused each building one at a time, it would have been much more effective. Even just focused the tower, that would have done it. But you know what? Purple did an amazing job cleaning up as much as they did. That has really set green back. Um, <laughs> even this is setting them back. They're trying to 
fix the building. I saw heard a, another master coming out there. One of the three brothers. Red Dragon's going out to pick a fight with the worst person to possibly fight. Orange is so dominant with their army, but so passive with their play. If they just attacked, that would be it. The game would end. Oh, we've got Soban. Yeah, Soban. Love him for his golems, but he's kind of... He's kind of just there, you know? He doesn't really do much. And there comes the lightning. This tower's gonna go down, but what does it matter? This is how powerful Orange is right now. Forces on both sides just unleashing hell. Tau in there, whipping that staff around like a champ. See the Guardian tanking forever just because of that cool ass ability. I'll remember what it is someday. And there we go, that's cleaned up. And now this force should swing across and help clean this up. But you can see those six Warlocks. You cannot withstand that. That is just disgusting. Orange, just take everything, just take this force and click into someone's base and you'll just destroy it. Warlocks tear, tear buildings down so quickly. You know, it's it's not even a joke, it's just disgusting. See purple on the recovery. See red. Uh, again, red's been really passive. That was like, a, they attacked, but it, it didn't do anything. Purple is really just the hero here. Um, if not for purple and green, this game would have been really boring. We see a dragon shrine! What is it called? Dragon's Monument. We see a dragon monument. Oh boy, AI, please do not. What a shame. What what a shame that would be, is if they use four samurai on a dragon monument. Ah. Oh. How are we doing for resources? No water. That's what's holding Orange back right now from going up the tech tree. But they're so close to maxing out their armies again. I, I don't know what their deal is with being so passive. They have a Warlock in three of their towers. They've got five Warlocks, three Zen Masters, no Channelers. I don't get it. I just don't. They've got the Golems now, so they don't even need as many workers. They really need to be getting water. It's like right there. It seems like we've hit the uh, the slow part of the game. This is the the burr warning time. The next few battles will be the ones where I'm like, okay, this has to decide the game, and if it doesn't make a difference, that's it. Got Ara and Atomo staying home for some reason, but Ara is leading some monks. Got another. I love the the no texture monks. They're cool as. I wish the ninjas had the same, but were black. That'd be perfect. <laughs> If they didn't have any sword color or anything, I'd be like, what is that unit? Game's been a little bit buggy lately. <laughs> for, for various reasons. I'm not sure why, but it, it makes it more interesting. Oh, we've got, uh, what's his name? Teppo. I always forget Teppo. He's my least favorite. I, not really. <laughs> I don't even know who my least favorite is. Think Vetkin. Just because he's no fun. He's like the opposite of doing fun things, you know? He's just speedy. Uh, now here we go with a huge attack. Um, but not really favoring a side because there's three people involved. And it's just going to muddle the attack everywhere. Selecting everything so you can see as much health as possible. Zymoth is actually in the fray. This could be huge. This could be a huge, huge pull. Because... Ugh, get those six Warlocks in this fight! Please, for love of God. He's already got three of them. And we're really seeing, oh, the lightning came down. That was gross. This is the important part. I'm sorry, nothing is more important than watching Zymoth. Ara is so tanky. She is such a good character. Um, even in melee range, she's invaluable. But unfortunately, she's not enough to fight that. Come on, Warlocks. You are so close to the battle. If you just jumped across, even if you lined up along the river, you'd be making all the difference joining in. Zymoth getting pulled into melee range now, which isn't great. He really needs to be at range to make most of his abilities. And looks like he's going to get cleaned up. And this is a very, very poor showing. Oh my god, Arara's shooting over the river. No, you know what? Screw it. Purple's won. Purple has won. There is no coming back from this. This is the highlight of the game, is watching Purple shoot across river at Orange. Purple has been attacked by Red, by Purple, 
and now uh, by by red, by orange, and now by green, and they're repelling them just one at a time. Oh, here we go! The fight is on. <laughs> Hurrah! You got to change targets. You're getting shot for nothing. Why? Just attack. This is actually... Purple might actually be in trouble here. Just because so much has happened, but that's such a cool attack. <laughs> I'm sorry I ever forgot you, Teppo. You're cool. Hurrah, no! <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> what is going on? This is very... Okay, so Purple is in a real dangerous position because they don't have enough forces. They've been attacked by so many people that Green could actually pose them a threat. And with some of their forces running over here, um... Orange could he just bought Zymoth straight back again, Jesus Christ. Orange is terrified. Yeah, that does a lot. Oh, I thought it did more damage than that. Sorry. Got excited for a moment. See a Tomo just getting absolutely mobbed here. This okay, if the warlock targets the building and starts destroying it, or the towers, if they start destroying things with the warlock, we could actually see um, purple be in danger. Purple is in danger. Now Orange is joining in. We're seeing Lotus on, uh, the Lotus team, Team Yin, is ganging up on Team Yang here. Um, really just bullying Purple, who, to be honest, made the best showing. And if Purple dies, I'm gonna go to the ending screen. Uh, I'm gonna call the game there, um, and be like, that was it. That was the game. First person eliminated, game over. In fact, I might do that from now on in general. We'll play until one person is eliminated and base the game off the victory there. Because that seems like a good marker of like who contributed the most in the game, who did meaningful things. As you can see, those warlocks are so doing damage. They attack so quickly. And the unclean one. The unclean one shouldn't be ignored. That's gone down, and now they just need to push through onto these towers. Oh! <laughs> It's Orange Soban versus Green... Orange Lotus versus Green Lotus. I got confused for a moment there. I thought Green was attacking his own stuff. See, that Dragon Tower stun is so effective. But now they're out of it. Uh, this... Again, this is just devastating. Purple. They're really, really sad. Uh, red needs to do something. Not saying that Red should help Purple, but Red needs to do something this game. <laughs> Where's your Dragon Monument? Is not not enough... <laughs> So once these forces cycle through here, you'll see these Peasant Huts and Tower will go down pretty quickly. Um, the only thing that might spare Purple at this point is if Green and, uh, uh, green and Orange fight really well, but they, they don't look like they're going to. Green is... This, this is a cool fight. We'll get back to Purple in a minute, okay? I want to see how this goes down. We've got Zymoth dropping the lightning. This has got to favor Orange. Oh yeah, look at that. Three more Warlocks into the fray. Another Warlock. This is... Absolutely disgusting forces. Orange is a superpower in this game, with how much of a force, how much of an army they've had. Even Lightning hit that, I think that's a stealth ninja. God, Orange, you are so cool. I wish you just did more. Yeah, Green's getting cleaned up like you wouldn't believe. I am so impressed. You know what, Orange, maybe I misjudged you. Maybe you can still pull off uh, an interesting contribution to this game. Wait for these units to get unstunned. That monk is doing no damage right now. <laughs> He's trying his heart out, but he just doesn't do anything. That's what all those little question mark things mean. Oh, now he's got the blind effect. That is a real long stun, though. Interestingly, those three warlocks do need to help kill that monk, just to get their damage back online. There is a bunch of chemists, but I don't think chemists are very effective against warlocks, um, so this isn't good. What is actually probably helping a lot is the peasants getting in the way. What have we got there? He's trying to build a town square. Ah, oh, you, you're such a legend, Purple. I, I truly, like, Purple is... No one else compares, right? Like, Red's not doing jack. Green, Green was the closest. Green put up a fight. Green actually tried to make the game interesting, but at the end of the day, Green did not do the legendary plays that Purple has done. And Green has not faced the sheer horrible adversity that um, Purple has had to face. And look how tough they are. They, they're going to repel this attack. 
with this three chemists, a powder keg cannoneer, and a dragon warrior in a tower. Which is laughable. But they are actually going to repel this attack. Oh, please don't die after that. There's only two two warlocks, but they might not make it. Okay, one of them's arguing for them. We're real good. But now green's going to come in. Cowardly green. <laughs> I'm sorry, green. You're doing fine. Um, I think the thing to take away from here is red has really just... Um, Use it! <laughs> Please, use the dragon monument! <laughs> Please! I will forgive you for everything if you use a dragon monument. Oh my god! This is scary! He's actually gonna take down that tower before he dies. God. The other tower has delivered a stun. Hopefully Isil will come out of this and immediately use his uh, ability. No. Nope. Come on, Isil, you've got the best ability in the game by far. Not the coolest, don't get me wrong, but the best. I actually consider Dragon Warriors pretty favorable as a matchup against um, Lotus, uh, against Warlocks, albeit not all the time. This is not really going to do anything, Orange. Stop trying to win brownie points. Get out of here. Yeah, you show him green. So with respects to purple, I think it's safe to say purple is one. Purple, oh man, Gareth is cool. Garen, sorry. Garen is so cool, just because he summons horses and look at him. Look at him. Look at that absolute man. He's, he's got to be the tallest in the game. I think that's what does it, is when you've got a really tall person with a really big sword, it stands out and it's just damn impressive. You see, he used Isil's ability on nothing. Red Dragon trying to redeem themselves in the final hours. Go attack Orange. Do it. Attack him, destroy him. Yes! Oh my god, yes! This is what you get, Orange. This is what you get. Oh, the gang up is real here. Not the gang up, but like... The karma. The passive play is being rewarded. I... God bless you, Purple. You have been putting up such a soldier of a fight that I, I want you to continue winning, like continue surviving. I want Orange to die first. Like, this force is devastating. This is a genuinely devastating attack. I think the problem is all their Zen Masters have died, so they don't really have, like, strong units. They've just got the Guardians. The Guardians, they're impressive for their staying alive power, but they die off. And once they're dead, that's it. You don't have a front line. I know that's obvious, but geez, you know. Atomo's still in there. Good on him. Not really going to make much of a dent there. Um, Red Dragon really needed to be... Oh, hey, there's Depo. <laughs> Looking at your vein? Your vein. Slowly chip the tower down. Does she outrange towers? She outranges samurai at least. That's funny. Unfortunately, Coral massacre peasants. Oh, he's finally in range somehow. She will take down that tower, but the, the samurai could actually help quite a lot with these peasants. I don't know if a samurai beats her one-on-one. -on -one. Guess we'll find out. What's he gonna do? Yep, he's running in to fight Coral. I approve. That's invaluable for the for the uh, purple player to stay in this game right now. Stop clicking on buildings. <laughs> oh, and a tower right up the back. Nice. The samurai's going for the ninja. No surprise there. Samurai should easy win that. Yvain's going to go back to attacking buildings. Okay, I am going to call it there because I don't think anyone 
is more of a hero than purple right now. If one more attack comes, if there's one more attack, he's gonna... Stop. Stop. <laughs> Cut it out. Hey, oh, you finally got your assignment. Okay, we'll give green one chance this force. If he attacks purple, we'll see how he does. Um, but if he goes anywhere else, we'll see how the fight goes, and that's where we'll call it. Because I don't see anyone contributing enough to, to kill someone. If green doesn't swoop in right now, and it looks like he might be going for orange. So we'll see how green fares, and then after that, we'll call it there. Because purple has repelled this attack and is going to rebuild. And honestly, for that, for everything that purple has been through, they deserve the gold medal. Still got the dragon shrine. Does the does the AI even use it? Do they even know how? So here we go, we're gonna have a big fight here. This favors green immensely just by sheer numbers and not to mention abilities. Four warlocks. Um, seeing this I forget what that ability is called. Probably like leech strike or something. Two ninja immediately running off, but here comes the main remainder of the force. We've got a Zymoth in there that'll really turn the tide, ideally in Orange's favor. Um, but if he gets pulled into melee, that could make a big difference because his ring attack won't be going off. His lightning still will, but, you know, it's uh, bringing down his capabilities. And we actually see, yeah, Orange is really taking quite a bad beating here. Um, with four, four, five Warlocks? Four Warlocks. With these four Warlocks rolling through, they should be able to tear apart what's here um, and just keep on playing through. Oh, there is a fifth Warlock there. Um, once Zymoth goes down, uh, it's basically um, free reign. They won't be able to stop five Warlocks. They'll, they'll tear through that, tear through that building, and they, they'll rely on these units up the back to pull them into melee to really, you know, make something happen. But they've still got two infested ones. Infested? Infected? Infested. Right up the front. Um, ignore it. Let him die. You don't need him. Just keep pushing on this attack. Yeah, so this, this build tower's going down. The tower's even targeting... Um, basically the wrong guy. The AI is really bad at focusing, is, is part of the problem. They spread their attacks out, whereas you want all your Warlocks to destroy a single building, basically. Um, to destroy it as quickly as possible. And so, yeah, again, their, their attacks are being spread out among the units and the tower. Uh, you'll see the real risk for them now is that they don't have any frontline. So even just a, a stream of tier 1 units will eventually kill these four Warlocks. But even just with this infested one, that's going to give them you know, a really hard time. Oh, and he's turned into a Warlock, so that's a little better for them. But as you can see, you know, four Warlocks, they really don't have the power um, going here to fight this off. Green's sending out another small attack force, but it's too far away to, to really make a difference on this battle. They'll get cleaned up before it, you know, before it matters. I would love for them to, to do more, but, you know, it, it, it's kind of too late now. The enemy's recovered. The, the initial shock of losing all their forces is gone. Um, and if no one else, you know, sends an attack wave in this time, then I'll... When this is cleaned up, that's it. Like, that's the game. Uh, green definitely second place. Oh, okay, red's moving out, but... Uh, the, the AI feels like they're at the right amount of aggression right now, but... They don't feel like they're doing enough um, to really make the game end, <laughs> basically. There goes Zymoth. It's bringing down the thunder. Bringing down the lightning. Oh, but there's two Zymoths, so it's going to be a Zymoth off. Oh! Four units with that bolt? What was that nonsense? Getting cleaned up. What a sizable army there. But yeah, green's force is going, and we'll see. Red might... Again, we have to see. We have to see if red pulls the switch and, and does the dragon. Release the dragon monument. Please. I need it in my life. Hurrah again. Invaluable. She's a souped up archer. I think she can outrange towers.
I'm really feeling not too impressed right now with red. Oh. Yeah, see, purple's got some samurai here. Red doesn't have samurai. They got the tower, yeah. There's not really a lot in the back to, to you know, help this fight. Green's also got a sizable force just chilling. Even abilities, but I, I just don't see it. I don't see this making an impact, basically. Um, I mean, this, this one might kill purple. If they kill purple, you know, it's very sad, to be honest. But, no, okay, this is... Uh... There's not much to say at this point. Like, purple lives, purple dies, what does it matter? Purple is the hero of this game. Purple did that big attack over here where they dealt immense damage to green, and while green recovered, purple then faced every single person attacking them one after the other, and has basically continued to face that since that point. To the point where now purple is fighting off green again, like solo. Um, you know, no one else has, has put in as much as a, a hard fight as Purple has. And so even if Purple dies at this point, Purple is the MVP. Because I thought they were dead ages ago. I thought they were gone. But you know, with this tower, they're not going to die. This attack won't kill them. <laughs> That's funny. Oh, got the rebirth effect. That's cool. Uh, the tower could kill them if they get into melee range and destroy the tower. That, that could kill the tower, but that tower is mostly going to hold them off. Like, that infected, infested one is almost dead. The stun went off. Now Isil's going to get focused down by the tower. Oh, he's actually pretty resistant to the piercing. That's good. You don't see enough units resistant to piercing. Piercing, why the why archers are so effective is because piercing does so much damage to everything. And once you get those upgrades that give the archers even more damage. They just destroy. They're so disgustingly strong. Which is great, because tier 1 units should still be relevant, right? Not just for their abilities. It, there should be a purpose to building tier 1 units. And if I saw a Battle Realms RTS remade, I would ideally like to see... Um, I'd like to see it more like a traditional RTS. I, I love how they had the building in this game. It was very creative and unique, how the units build together. But... What the units really need is to, you know, turn into those, um, you know, you need the tier 1 units to be cheaper, spammable, and then your later on units to be those elite units that you want them to be. Currently, the flow of the game, um, because the units get more expensive and you spend more time building as you go up, it's very awkward, um, fortunate, but the more time you're given to build up, the more valuable those high tier units get. I don't know. I'm not an expert on the game, and I'm sure some people um, with more knowledge than me would be able to comment much greater than me on the, the balance and how well the game plays out. And just from a, a loose examination of, of how the game plays, it feels like tier 1 units um, sometimes lose their relevancy as time goes on. And the units that do keep their relevancy later on, the, the tier 1 units that do keep their relevancy later on, are the ones that have really cool effects. Um, they have good abilities, or, you know, they have really high damage like the archers do. Like, Leaf Disciples later on, I probably wouldn't build many of them, except for their ability, you know? Because you have Warlocks, you have unclean ones. Leaf Disciples don't really bring too much to the table. But really, this looks like it. I mean, uh, another force is coming in to attack Purple. But Purple's just not gonna die. Red's not doing anything, like they're not achieving anything. Here we go, another attack. Good luck. Okay, so real quick, each clan, by, by clan, each clan. Favorite Zen Master. We've got in Dragon Clan, RR. 
you know what? Screw it. I'll do a tier list later on of favorites and masters. Just not even like balance, but like cool factor and personal favoritism. But Ara for for Dragon, just have like being the longest range archer in the game is just cool. She's not bad at melee fighting. She has a stamina pool that goes for miles, and she's fast. So she's really cool. Serpent Clan. I think it has to be Utara. Um, just because Serpent Clan, all of the Zen Masters, they feel like they're just there. They don't make me go, wow, that's an amazing unit. They're, they're all just in the game. You know, they, they don't blow my mind. Um, they're all very functional. And out of all of them, I think Utara is the most interesting and functional because of how she stuns enemies when she attacks. And it makes her really interesting when you notice her in fights. Lotus Clan, Isil. Um, I love his lore, or at least I loved his lore when I grew up, <laughs> and I didn't know any better about the about the cliche of being a master that's a hundred years old but looks like a teenager. I didn't know that was like a trope back then. But he uses an hourglass as a weapon, and look at it, it's already bloodied, and that's just so cool. And then he's got just a really amazing ability. You pop it, you run in, and you just do so much damage. It's so cool. So I saw the cool factor. Also, the fact he costs no no water, only rice, is just something I've always loved about him. Wolf Clan, Longtooth, and I don't even think Longtooth is good. Um, someone might be able to correct me and say that he's amazing, but I've always found Longtooth to be kind of bad. I, I don't think he attacks fast enough for what he does. I don't think he's a ability is that impressive, especially with how it changes his damage type. Um, and just in general, I don't think, like, he looks like he's this heavily armored warrior, but he's just not anything special. Like, he's he's what I imagine Greyback should have been like. He should have been um, the heavily armored warrior. But you know what? Just for the fact that he uses a boomerang, he's the coolest. Alright, unfortunately I will call it there. I don't think, like, even if this attack succeeds, this attack's not going to succeed again. This tower, these two towers two together are going to slowly, slowly, slowly kill everything off. Maybe the channel will keep them alive long enough to do damage, but it, it seems unlikely at this point that purple will ever die. I don't know, it's close. We'll give it five minutes. Give it five minutes, and, uh, you know, if they succeed at that point, then sure. But if green comes along and kills kills orange's forces, you know we're stuck in a perpetual cycle of trying to kill purple and failing. Then I, I just have to give it to purple. Like purple has just been the MVP of this game. Orange was the scariest for a long time because he just had this giant force, um, but he failed to really capitalize on what that giant force is capable of. Um, it was cool watching people try and fight him and get absolutely destroyed, but yeah, he, he really couldn't bring it to the table. Um, Green has been a consistent uh, contributor to this game. They've really been quite impressive. Um, you'll, I definitely think you'll see that in the scores. They weren't ever dangerous enough to kill someone, but they're always present enough to do some damage. Like this, right? Right now, they're, they're doing some damage. They're contributing. Please don't use your channel of birds on, on a peasant hut or something like that. Uh, red. Shame. Big, big red mark of shame. Really just didn't contribute this game. Currently has no Zen Masters. Built a dragon monument and didn't use it. Four samurai into a dragon monument that you didn't even use. <sighs> you are a shame, Red. Shame, 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 shame. And now we'll get to see that... Green is going to be the one to inevitably clean this up and finish off purple, unless someone else decides to attack purple and kill Green's forces, in which case I will just rage quit. But at this point, it is impossible for purple to recover. Purple was such a legend surviving this long. I think this map made a really strong showing of, of bot bashing. I think this um, bot type, the aggro bot, showed a really strong showing of, of bot bashing, uh, but ultimately the game of Battle Realms in general 
struggles to reach a conclusion uh, because of the very nature of the game. Um, unless you focus down peasant parts, towers, you know, after you kill the enemy force, you kill the enemy force, you focus the towers, you focus their peasant parts. If you don't do that, you will struggle to kill anyone for the longest time. And as you can see here, the AI are just like it, there's nothing. Purple has an archer, a samurai, and a chemist, and two towers, and peasants. And green has three warlocks and several more units, and just can't kill him. Man, buildings build really quickly. That's impressive. Look at this. Look at this fight. The warlock is doing as much damage as the peasant. It's just like a tickle fight, like a slap fight. They just... Nothing is happening. <laughs> what are you doing? What is going on? I got some Zen Masters, cool. Yeah, ah, Coral. Didn't see much of him this time. Saw him, uh... In purple space at one point, I think. Saw him somewhere, that's for sure. Now we're just watching the the battle play out, basically. Oh, they got an archer out. Actually, making quite a difference, but unfortunately, their base is shredded. They're losing peasant huts. Um, this will be the defeat of Purple. Uh, but you know what? I'm going to use Purple Dragon in the future. That is now my color to play when I play Dragon Clan as Purple. Because I've, I've never seen a dragon fight this well in all the game. Where did Green's army go? Did it return to base? What is going on? Oh no, it came up here to bully frickin' purple, okay. Now we are calling it when purple's base dies, so red can't score extra points. Well, you know what, we'll see how this battle goes, because if, if red redirected these over here and attacked on two fronts, they could actually, theoretically, like not literally, I, I don't think they'll actually succeed, but if they redirected these guys to attack here, where they've only got the, the Warlock at the tower, that's, you know, two Zen Masters or Monka Spearmen, they should be able to take that down, especially with Kazan. Then, cleaned this up. Okay, no. Alright, we're calling it there. Good game. So many Warlocks. But, unfortunately, they do not get to show that. Purple, you were the hero, you were the legend, and the game crashed.